Uh, good afternoon, I'm Kevin McPeak from Symantec, and I'm here to discuss the ways in which our foreign adversaries are attacking uh, some of our uh, critical infrastructure of both the United States and some of, uh, some of our allied nations, and some of the methodologies that these advanced uh, state actors are, are using. You know, I won't read to you this quote from the great Chinese uh, military strategist, Swin Tzu. Swin Tzu wrote these words before uh, the United States of America was even, uh, you know, a concept. It was, you know, the, the Native Americans living here, and yet uh, advanced uh, military studies and analysis were being done uh, in East Asia by Swin Tzu and others. But I will provide for you a quote from the other great military strategist from the Western tradition, Carl von Clausewitz where he said that surprise is the backbone of uh, fusing speed with secrecy. So if you think about it, we live in an age of fiber optic cables. So the, abil the ability of an adversary, a nation state adversary, to attack our systems, to degrade the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of, the system, of our systems can happen literally at the speed of light as, as these things are, are tracking uh, through cyberspace over over fiber cables. So immense damage can be done incredibly quickly. Gone are the days where those sitting in a security operations center can look at an attack, make some decisions, have some analysis, get on the phone, have some discussions. The reaction time for the United States and our allies must be immediate, must occur in real time when these types of attacks take place. So let's talk a little bit about the threat landscape. There's been a fundamental shift over time. Initially, it was the idea of going into the dark web and saying, you know, you've been pawned and um, taking over, you know, government systems or large uh, corporations and going into the dark web and sort of getting your, your chops in cyberspace under your uh, alias about what you've achieved. Uh, but what, what adversaries realize is there's incredible money to be made in cybercrime. Backend databases have a treasure trove of information and these uh, hacker attacks can, can uh, be done for profit. Of course, espionage, you know, the, one of the world's, uh, certainly one of the world's oldest professions. And if you think of the Cold War construct, both East and West spent prodigious resources putting people at great risk to embed human beings in the other's territory and have them operational, gathering information, and then sharing it. Now, with the click of a, of a mouse uh, and some click strokes, if you can breach the other nation's uh, databases, whether government, whether in large industries or their intellectual property or their manufacturing base, you can do tremendous damage and, and basically massive pilfering of information uh, through cyber espionage operations. And of course, cyber warfare. What we're seeing now on the world stage is whenever there's a global kinetic engagement where a nation state attacks another nation state, almost always the initial, uh, the IMW, the indicator and warning, is a direct attack on the command, control, communications, and computer systems of that nation state that's about to be attacked. So, you know, there's various models, various organizations, including Department of Defense, Lockheed Martin, and others, have come up with these various models to identify and explain uh, sort of the chain of events that occurs when there's a cyber attack. Semantics no different. We've developed what we call our attack chain. Uh, reconnaissance, incursion, uh, discovery, capture, and exfiltration. But the goal of cyber defenses is to be as far to the left of bang as possible, to stop the adversary uh, early, but then also have cascading defenses. So if something fails here, at least it will be caught, because what you don't want to do is have to play uh, clean up and, and recovery at the very end after the event has occurred. So let's talk about the resurgence of, of sabotage campaigns, uh, disrupting uh, a lot of political activities. We saw, we saw the Greenberg Group, which uses technologies known as Shamoon, very successful back in 2012, targeting um, energy sector activities and other activities in Saudi Arabia. They went dormant for a while, and then in 2016, we saw a massive spike. Additionally, we, we saw in 2016, semantic research saw that a threat actor we believe emanating from Russia uh, that we're naming as uh, Sandworm, uh, going into the Ukraine and doing incredible cyber attacks against the energy sector. We are knocking major parts of the power grid offline, and that happened uh, two different times in, in 2016. So you can see here, I won't read all these to you, but you see some of the identified threat act actors here, 
and some of their TTPs, tactics, techniques, and procedures, uh, you know, what parts of the world they are targeting, what are their political, economic, and social objectives. Um, is it to basically stifle development in their adversary? Is it to operationally degrade their military capabilities, harm their economies, or is it just it's basically stealing wealth? Uh, this is the sort of things that uh, many of these groups are active in. Again, even more semantic research findings here showing adversaries coming, uh, emanating that we believe from Iran, North Korea, uh, China, and other parts of the world. Uh, during 2016, we saw significant uh, sabotage activities, as I mentioned, uh, against uh, activities in Ukraine, Saudi Arabia, disc wiping activities that created a massive financial loss, massive damage to these nation states. And then also subversion. If you think about things associated with the US presidential election cycle, the compromise of the uh, Democrat National Committee, uh, you know, some of their uh, messaging systems and things that were put out in the public domain, having created a lot of turbulence in the election cycle. We saw some other breaches. We even saw the Olympic uh, activity, the World Anti-Doping Agency having medical information of various nations' athletes and then putting that out in the public domain so any health privacy issues were thrown out the window with that. So it's amazing what these nation states will target. So let's talk quickly about North Korea and some of their goals. Uh, they attempted to uh, steal a billion dollars. They, they were successful in getting away with $94 million in 2016. Uh, what's the, the malware that they used was based on the exploit of the SWIFT banking system, which is the international settlement system. So all of the global economy is predicated on when markets close of successfully doing wire transfers and international transactions of, of the money uh, globally. So if you're able to get, get into those systems and then cause transactions to occur, send money to your organizations, you can basically uh, rob banks, not at gunpoint where you go in with a mask in the bank, but through cyberspace. So this was the sort of things that we saw. The FBI did some analysis. They linked this group to uh, the Sony attacks back in 2014, so the Lazarus group, and which is believed to operate out of North Korea. So in Bangladesh, we saw some stolen credentials, the wire transfer initiated, money sent to the Philippines, uh, Sri Lanka, which actually did not occur. Somebody was smart enough to, to catch what was happening and say, this doesn't look appropriate, so that was blocked. Uh, there was also money that made it to the Philippines to a casino. The casino operators had enough ethics to say, wait a minute, this isn't a legitimate transfer of money, sent the money back. Um, but nonetheless, if you can think of the damage that this has caused. Other nations, uh, going as far back as 2015, have been compromised in this way. And everywhere you see in red, there were nation states that had bank, parts of their banking system uh, impacted by this. So I would like to thank you for your time. I know this was just a short over, overview, but it really lets you know some of the aggressive activities that our adversaries in cyberspace are directing against large government activities, election cycles, large industrial concerns, power grid, uh, and the financial system. So again, thank you for